Hello survivors and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be going over the 5 star wheel and basically going through a potential update that I think is kind of well overdue, especially when comparing it to previous updates and how long they took. So first off, I want to just say in the very top comment, I should have a, a copy paste that you can just easily fill in. And I want you to put in the, the top two characters of each trait that you'd like to see in the five star wheel. Try and keep this as realistic as possible. Not amazingly strong promos, especially not recent ones. I'd say you want to start from the, the beginning and work your way forward and try and get two characters of each trait. And if they're revives, if they're like disarms and decapitates, the likeliness of them getting in, if they're a former promo, is very, very small. So, like I said, try and keep it realistic, and you've got like more chance of being happy with the characters when they do finally get updated. So, we're going to go through the last times the five star wheel was updated, and we've got to go all the way back to 11th of August 2017 to get the very first update. 77 days later, so less than three months, 27th of October, we also had an update. I think that pace is is ultra fast and i think it's a bit too too much to keep up personally that was very quick the next one is 145 days and that just seems like that sort of middle ground five to six months and that seems pretty good which was on the 21st of march 2018 and the pace was kept up for the next update which was only 156 days later so again around the five month mark and that was the 24th of august 2018 however right now we're sitting at 187 days. This is the longest we've had to go without a five-star wheel update. And obviously, it's probably going to be weeks until there's going to be a five-star update. So we're going to be looking at 200 plus days, most likely, which is too much. If I'm honest, it's too much. There needs to be a good set period for five-star wheel updates. I'd say a maximum of 182 days, which is exactly six months. The wheel should be updated at least twice a year, in my opinion, just to keep it fresh. And, you know, just, just to make it, I don't know, it's something to look forward to, if I'm honest. So, next up, we're going to look at an idea that I've got, basically, that we could happen on the new 5-star wheel. So, currently on your screen, you can see the current 5-star wheel odds, which is a 5-star ascendable recruit being 7% and a 5-star recruit being 93%. There are actually seven five-star ascendable recruits on the wheel, so potentially they could be 1% each. Not 100% sure in terms of like if it's broken down like that or not. There's no way of knowing. Certain characters within those five stars could be harder to get, the, uh, five-star ascendable, should I say, could be harder to get than other five-star ascendables. Again, it's hard to know, but basically I think these odds are okay they're not great obviously but they're not too too terrible in terms of actually getting an ascendable the new odds i think should potentially be used is this and it's based on there being a new unique five star ascendable only available in the five star recruit wheel and that it's basically just so there's something a bit more glamorous about this wheel which there isn't at the moment even though there are some decent characters in here there's nothing really to really make anyone excited about pulling from this wheel there's nothing special here that you can't get anywhere else or you haven't been able to get anywhere else before and that's why i think a unique five star would be really good and that could be broken down with its own percentage either being one percent and that is obviously increasing the ascendable percentage to eight percent or it could just be mixed in with those ascendable recruits in the seven percent i don't really mind but i do think there needs to be unique just like i said just to make this a little bit more a bit more excitement because after the first couple of pulls if you get that one or two characters that you're missing on the new ascendable recruits you're not really looking forward to much other than perhaps maybe a random five star that you haven't got before. Okay, so lastly, I'm going to make some choices in terms of the characters I think should be on the wheel. And these characters, I'm going to make one leader and one specialist for each of the different traits. And I'm going to try and make them offensive characters mainly, but mainly because I think within free to play, offense has been kind of lackluster in terms of character release. We've got a lot of good defensive characters and defense seems to be getting stronger but we need those older characters to get released within free to play or re-released within free to play because some of them are just so so needed so first up i'm going to go with red madison as an alert leader basically she is obviously a rainbow lead but she's something that free to play needs so much right now and it's anti-melee leaders we don't have any really we only have just these non-ap leaders 
that are very slow and there's nothing that you can put a lot of characters behind. Red Madison is not like super great, but she does the job at the moment in terms of she's got a rainbow lead. You can take her as the leader against melee teams, only melee teams because her, her damage buff only works against melee characters. And there are certain teams obviously that wouldn't work against, for instance, Eric's team. Her, her buff would not work against Eric's team. At least it wouldn't work against the tough characters in Eric's team. So there are downsides to it. But I think an, an anti-melee lead is kind of required within um, free-to-play right now. And the second character I'm going to go for, who is the specialist, is going to be Lori. This is a duplicate for me, but I think she's quite an important character if, she, if you get her and you pull her as a duplicate. But then at least you've got some fodder, but there are people who haven't got Lori. And she isn't, like, game-breakingly good, but she is pretty good balanced character for defense and attack. So she can make the difference for a lot of people in terms of just getting to the next level of free to play and she she's such an early character i think she's nearly a year old now basically it was a free to play login reward a long time ago uh, within fast i'm gonna go with jesus which is a, an over year old character who is a leader i don't think he's spectacular but there aren't too many fast leaders who are actually any good the other one maybe would be like rise to power rick um in terms of one of the earlier characters he it could easily be rise to power rick instead the specialist, I'm going to go with Romanov just because, he, he again, he's not like super recent. He has got quite a decent amount of damage outlay. He is fairly exciting to get as a character because some people don't actually have him. So he wouldn't be a duplicate for a lot of people, but he might be a duplicate for some. That's kind of the bonus for Jesus as well. I don't think a lot of people will have him. So it will be more like a just a nice to get a character that you haven't got as a duplicate. Now onto Strong. I'm going to say that Abraham that was given away in the event is kind of required in terms of if you don't have Madison, if you're not going to add Madison to this, he is pretty much one of the only melee leaders for an attack team right now, other than Mirabel, who is a league character. And if you don't have Abraham and you don't have Mirabel, I, I, I just don't know what you're going to use on an attack team as a leader right now against melee teams. It's going to be absolutely horrible for you, I'm sure. Now, within the specialist, there will be a couple of options for strong. Obviously, only one of these should be getting in. I think alpha is probably the best one to keep here just because the capitate is so important. And, and you basically, I don't think alpha is spectacular, but she is required to actually be able to compete even on the lowest level against some of these top level defense teams. And within free to play now, you can get such heavy defensive, revive heavy defense teams that decap is just massively required. The other characters that you could potentially go with would be Anna again, just just because she's fun and she actually is actually pretty good. I've used her a lot in Faction Assault, and if you if you get her weapon out for like massive damage and don't replace her tier three, her damage outlay can be massive. So it, it, again, just a bit of fun. And lastly, I think Shiva should come back in this world. It's not like she's being added anywhere else. I don't think she's like super strong as she was once upon a time. There's not much sale potential in a Shiva anymore. And I just think there are a lot of people who don't have her. And she's just something that would add a little bit more fun back into the game for some people. Shivas are like obviously a lot of people's favorite characters. There are much more pay to play exclusive Shivas within Lacerator Shiva, for instance. Now, lastly, the Tufts. Again, this is quite hard. Dwight is a, a tough leader. He's quite recent, but I don't think he's amazing. So I don't think he's going to be a game changer. It's just to have a tough leader in here. And secondly, I think Tyrese, again, I think Tyrese should come back, to, back into this world just because pretty much the cap is so required. I don't think the, Tyrese is, again, super, super amazing. He's just pretty much the only option within free to play against ranged teams right now. And he was one of the first five characters released. Like a lot of these free to play characters that are being used right now are some of the first 20 characters released, which I think it just needs to be like more, some of the more recent characters within six stars need to be released within free to play somehow even if it's in within like uh, login rewards or something um because some of these more recent characters are obviously a lot stronger uh, the other character could be a new threat dwight i think his damage outlay is great obviously he's not a decap so he hasn't got huge potential within raid teams but he can be quite fun to use in other parts of the game and basically that's that's my choices for the five star will i don't think any of these characters are like super game changing except perhaps madison just and it's mainly because of the the massive void within melee attack leaders at the moment for free to play it's been a year and a half and we still haven't got an ap on attack a melee leader for free to play it's, it's ridiculous so hopefully some of these characters uh, become within the five star well tell me which ones you like out of these and, and i will be reading which 
and I will be reading your choices as well, guys. Hopefully, the five-star wheel isn't too far away. I mean, like I said, it's been 187 days by now, and it could be easily two or three more weeks before it happens, so it could be at 200 plus days. So, hopefully, something changes very soon. Five-star wheel update is very much required. But that's the end of my video, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in, and as always, keep on surviving, guys. Keep on surviving.